This afternoon we're going to talk about cuttings. I always enjoy taking cuttings, it's a lot of fun <clears throat> and it saves a lot of money too because to produce your own is uh, well worth it. Now there's three main types of cuttings. First of all you have the softwood cutting. This is where the wood is very soft and these are normally taken in the spring and we'll explain how to take them or what have you. But that doesn't stop you taking them later in the season but for quick and easy propagation the spring ready for planting out. The second type is the semi-hardwood. So when it's semi-hardwood means the top's, top's very soft but getting down to hardwood there. These should be taking around about middle to the end of summer, mainly shrubs and that type of thing. And then finally, right at the end of the season, are what we call the hardwood cuttings. Now these are just basically stems of plants, in this case it's the ribes, but it could be anything, buddleia, cornus, a whole variety of things, and these are treated slightly different to the other two. The other type of cutting you can take is what is known as a leaf cutting. Now if you think of begonias and uh, um, streptocarpus, lovely house plants, big fleshy leaves, and that's what you call a leaf cutting, and I'll give you some examples of that a bit later. What we want to start doing now is preparing ourselves to take the first set of cuttings. Now when we come to taking softwood cuttings, um, these are, are young tips that are just ready to, to root and propagate. You need to have a, the essential equipment with you, a plastic bag and a sharp pair of seconders or a good knife. And the ideal is you'll look over the bush and select the various shoots you want. The reason for the bag is as soon as you cut the cutting, it will start to dehydrate. There's nothing worse than trying to propagate off a plant that is flagging. So the plastic bag will keep it fresh until we go back to the, uh, the bench to actually propagate them. So I'm looking for some nice young shoots. There's one there. There's another good one there. And pentstemons, of course, root very easily at this time of the year. And the other thing about it is that a lot of these things, we may have a hard winter, in which case you've got an extra insurance. The cuttings are taken now and rooted and you're uh, not worried if, for instance, it gets badly hit in the winter. So we've got the cuttings in the bag, we'll carry on looking for a bit more and then we'll head back and do the actual propagation. Let's start with the softwood cuttings. As I say, normally you take these sort of early spring um, things like coleus, geraniums, uh, dahlias, all the sort of stuff that you want to use in the garden later in the year. But we're just showing you how to do them, um, although it's a bit late in the season. So as I said earlier, everything must be kept in a polythene bag. You want to keep them as fresh as you possibly can. One of the problems is that when you try to propagate with a plant that's sort of showing signs like that, forget it. Uh, the water's not getting up there and the plant is going to really struggle. So going in now and finding good young shoots like this, you need to have about three to four inches and the important thing is, is to always cut sharp to a node belief a leak joint like that. Good sharp knife, um, a pair of seconds if they're really sharp and then what you need to do is to remove as many of the leaves as possible because we want all that energy to go to the top of the plant and back down to the bottom. All the extra leaves on there are just going to take an awful lot of the nutrient. So there is a typical little cutting from soft wood. As I said earlier, they go back in there, we'll do two or three, so we've got plenty to show you. Again, reasonably strong, nice and supple, and take the bottom below the node, cut it off fresh, trim the leaves back. Basically, doing cuttings is like an operation in the theatre. Everything has to be clean, it has to be surgically prepared. In other words, the knife you use, uh, clean, not been used for anything else, and also to all the other things, including your hands because if you've been out and collected stuff and there's a bit of uh, um, fungus on there you can bet a few spores are in there 
and that's not a great start. Another great family favourite, the Pelagonium of the Geranium. Again, tight back to the, uh, the actual leaf axle, all the leaves off, nice and clear. We can afford to leave that one, and there's your cutting there. Something else that uh, is very popular is the coleus. <coughs> and this again is a very softwood material. Yeah. People, of course, will automatically say it's not called coleus anymore. You're absolutely right. Solar steaman, but I find it easier to say coleus. It is, after all, the same thing. Good variegated plant, good indoor plant, and equally one that you can plant out in your summer bedding displays. But that definitely won't stand outside the winter. So there's a little selection. Let's see, I've got me a goodie bag. Yeah, there's another one. Let's do that one. So again, nice clean cut. Axle, axle. So, we've got a nice little selection there to work with. The next thing is actually getting them ready to put them in their uh, pot or their tray or whatever you're going to do. Now we're going to move on to the semi-hardwood cuttings. Again, these are nearly all shrubs and you would take these around about the end of, uh, end of the summer and you need a fairly soft top to it but getting firmer down the bottom, hence the term semi-hardwood four to about six inches long and you make a straight cut like all the others behind the leaf nodes and then slowly work your way up the stem taking out all the extra leaves that you won't want and there we are um, so we've got a, a nice little bag to put that back in there we are let's do this one as well it's a lovely one of my favorite Cytisus batandirii, wonderful plant. Got a scent just like a pineapple. And again, a great must in the garden. No matter whether they're variegated, what they are. So there we are, back in the plastic bag. Now the thing about it is that with semi-hardwood cuttings, a very similar process, except that you wouldn't be doing them on the oasis. That wouldn't work with them. Now the semi-hardwood cuttings are actually going to be put in a cold frame or a greenhouse over winter. So an extra um, help uh, there uh, producing the plant is just below there is some very sharp grit. So same compost as we used before, um, a, a John in his uh, cutting compost with the perlite and everything, and then finish it off just below the rim of the pot with sharp grit. And the idea is, back to my trusty dibber, as you date the hole to put the cutting in, some of the grit will fall through and it will act as good drainage for your cutting. And then, similar thing again, round the side of the pot, five or six in there, as I said earlier, every one of them, a good spray over. Now, you could, if you wanted to do, put a bit of polythene over the top, or something to try and heat up the process to get them started. But really, by the end of the season, starting to get warmer, and the leaves are going to drop off, and that's another thing. Through the winter, keep a check on them. You see any leaves rotting off or dying, clear them all away. It's an operating theatre, remember I said before, so nice and sterile, and then um, leave them until the early spring, when you should be able to take them out the pot, you know you do that, you just tap the pot round the edge, lift it out, they'll all be rooted and then you can put them into their own individual pot. So similar process except it's a soft top to the cutting and a firmer base to it, the semi-hardwood cutting. Another type of semi-hardwood cutting is the heel cutting, where it has a little bit of the heel from the, the hardwood of the plant. This is a lavender. As you can see, they're much shorter, about two to three inches. And if you imagine this plant growing uh, in an a, a upright situation, which it would, all you do is hold your finger there and just 
quickly and it will produce the heel. There's another good example there of one there. And just a sharp tug and it pulls it down. Now I'll also show you another way how you can propagate these. But heel cuttings usually about two to three inches long and again a whole variety of semi hardwood material you can do in this particular way. Right, the next cuttings are hardwood cuttings. These are normally taken about the end of the summer, really into the autumn. Forsythia, um, Cornus, all the buddleias, whole variety of uh, shrub type plants. And what you do is you remove all the leaves, if they haven't already come off. Some of them may be uh, evergreen and they won't. Take all the leaves off and you end up with something like this, usually about six to eight inches long. The important bit is what's the top and what's the bottom. Very simple. With your seconders, you cut off the bottom tight across the, the last bud in a straight line. I know this is going to make it short of a shape. Tight, like that. The top, you cut on a slant. So where you've got your bud sticky out, on a slant. So again, I know it's going to shorten it, but I'll give you some idea. Slanting the seconders and straight across there, slanting and straight across there. We now know which is the top and which is the bottom. These you put into the open ground, or if you're fortunate enough to have a cold frame. So it's the end of the season. And with a spade, you just put your foot on the blade and you just push it into the ground, just move it slightly backwards and forwards to make a deep, narrow V trench. And then about, oh, I don't know, four to six inches apart, you put all the different cuttings in there. To give them an added chance, I would use some sharp grit and place that in the bottom of the trench when you prepared it. And then as the cuttings, four to six inches long. They don't have to take up a lot of room and you could use one row and a whole variety of things. Privet's another great one. And like all of these things, what better fun than actually producing your own plants? Finally, the last type of cutting we're going to do is the leaf cutting. Gloxinias, Streptocarpus, Begonias. Big fleshy leaves. I've just given an example, but quite honestly, they need to be a bit fleshier than this. And the idea is that you would cut off, obviously you don't want that on there, so that would go, and then you can either make several cuts across the leaf like that, and like that, and like that, and so you end up with that cut into three different bits. And to give an added method of propagation, a very, very sharp knife, and you just want to nick the vein. Just nick the vein on the back. Don't cut into the leaf, just nick the vein. Then, with a tray like this, fill it up again, plenty of, uh, of, of uh, potting compost, and then finish it off with a thin layer of sort of medium, medium sharp sand, not really gritty stuff, more medium, flatten it across there, and then you either just place the cuttings in the medium that you've made, or you can lay them flat down that way up. And eventually, from out of these different nodes in the leaf, the little cutting will start to shoot. As I say, again a bit of fun, and a tray like this, you can actually use a piece of glass or polystyrene, something like that, um, over the top of it, perspex, something like that, just to cover them over to give them that extra bit of heat. But that's the, um, the leaf cuttings, and as I say, things like streptocarpus, they get these great big long leaves like that, and you just slice them and slice them and slice them, and either place them, root end up in the soil like that, or lay them on the top. Now there's a really good way of propagating a variety of different plants that you can honestly say you did it all yourself. Working on the same theory as we said earlier about everything being clean and sterilised, the pot. Wash them all out beforehand. Doesn't matter if they've been used for something else. 
but before you actually use them for the cuttings, give them a good scrub in some soapy water. Now you can either use the clay pot, which I prefer because they actually retain the moisture a lot better and uh, they're better, firmer subject to work with, or a plastic, it's really your choice. So having chosen the pot you use, let's use the clay one. You then need to use some crocks, and it could be stone or a bit of gravel or something. This will help to provide the drainage in the bottom. I should have said earlier, always drainage. Always got to be a hole there, or in this case, a similar type of thing. Plenty of drainage. So a bit of crock in the bottom of the pot, just to go over there to allow the water to filter through. The compost we're going to use, it's an all um, typical cutting compost made up of some very sharp sand. The white bits you can see is perlite. Now, perlite is a great additive when taking cuttings, helps to root them very easily. So we mixed it all up. If you don't want to go to the trouble, go to any good garden centre and just ask for cutting compost. Get it in there, get it nice and firm around the pot. And remember, these have got to be watered, so the last thing you want to do is to fill the pot right up to the top. Otherwise, when you do water, I think it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. So, we filled the pots up there. We're ready to strike the cuttings. Now, either some people like to really be on the safe side and use a rooting hormone powder. Again, you can buy that quite easily in any garden centre. And it's a powder form. You will take the cutting, you will dip, into a little bit of water, into a bit of water, then into the uh, rooting powder and to put it out. Now, you need a dibber to actually make the, the hole in the, uh, the side of the pot to put the cutting in. Now, this can have a double edge. The pencil can either be used as a dibber or you can use it for something else in a minute. I'll tell you what it is. But the idea is that you dip the cuttings in there and then you push the thing in, make a hole round there, and put the cutting in. And then the same again there. Dip it round, push the cutting in, nice and firmly down, and so on. And you go round at the edge of the pot, because the moisture will stay there, help to root them and everything. And you'll get one, two, three, four, five, about six. Put another one in, as I say. You can get the proper wooden dibber, which uh, doesn't serve the other purpose I'm going to tell you about in a minute, but at least it does a good clean job. The next thing, having done that, and this is the essential bit, is to make sure they're sprayed over. So a fine jet of water, combo should be watered at any rate, but a fine jet of water over them. And then, this is where the pencil comes in handy, the label. You then write down on the back the date you took the cutting and on the front, the name of the variety, and put it in there. The ideal way to do it then, is if you have a propagator, uh, that you can put them in too fine, but if not, if you cover them over with a clear polythene bag like that, and put it on the windowsill, and then every few days, just take it off, give them another spray over, that keeps the cutting turgid, and helps to create that heat in there, and I reckon within two, maybe three weeks at the very most, you will have half a dozen young penstemon plants. Then you will pot them into individual pots. Preferably if you're doing it in the early spring, it doesn't matter, but if you're doing it slightly later in the season, then definitely you'd want to keep them inside until about end of May, June, before you put them out. Now the other way of taking cuttings as well, the same again, the, the uh, uh, softwood cuttings, we'll put that out of the way now, is to use something that will be familiar to you, the oasis. Horticultural fleece, as they call it. But at any rate, the idea is that you will get a piece that big, and much bigger than that, soak it, absolutely soak it. Leave it overnight in a bucket of water with something holding it down. And then, when you're ready to take the cuttings, back to my trusted pen, and you will make so many holes in the thing. In this case, I think we're gonna get three, and you can see the water coming in as I do it. And again, and again, and again, right the way across. 
And then in this case, we'll take our little pelagonium cuttings. You just put them in there. And in there. And so on. Once again, we're back to our trusted plastic bag. And then you just put that all over the top. Put it on the windowsill. And when the cuttings start to root, and you'll soon know, all you have to do is, to, with a sharp knife, break off a piece of the oasis, and you've got almost like a mini rooted plant in a, in, in a, in a plug plant, basically, and then you can carry on from there. Obviously, we did earlier, and they'll do very well in here, is a coleus, or as I said, if you were listening, Sir Lenny Steeman. And that go on in you go. There we are. Again, it's difficult to put a label on. We put the label down at the side, the name of the variety and the date you struck. The polythene bag over the top of I said, and then put it on the windowsill. Um, and that's a very, very easy way of property. Mainly softwood cuttings. I wouldn't recommend it for anything else, but it's quick, it's easy, and it doesn't cost a lot of money.